who are in the room, but I think the last, Judy, Greg, oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I was going to introduce uh, Whitney and then Whitney will introduce. I was getting to that, okay. but go for oh, it. Okay. <laughs> no, go, Brian, uh, Sergeant Arms. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Whitney Pintello. She's a member of the Gilroy Noon Club. Uh, that's our district governor's home club. She has been a Rotarian since 2012, served as a president a few years back, and actually we both were presidents at the same time, and is now fundraising chair for our club, which is good to know we're gonna be um, having you help us, and is the area six um, area governor. Brittany is a full-time artist and runs a comedy theater with her parents and husband. Together they have three daughters and finally they all clone the nest. So Whitney, <laughs> you're up. Welcome, I, thank you for welcoming us, happy to be here. And actually before Greg popped on, I was saying that um, I read the same introduction for Greg each time we have this meeting and I thought it might be fun for a few of us if I add in one fact to his bio that's not true, but at the end you'll have to guess which it is. It'll be fun uh -huh. for you too, Greg, right? Okay. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Uh, Greg Giussiana has been a Rotarian for over 20 years. He has served the district twice as assistant governor and lieutenant governor. He's been and still is a member of several district committees. He's a past recipient of the Richard D. King Award and Sidney R. Mitchell Award. Greg is a longtime resident of Gilroy. Among his many community activities, Greg is a past president of the Garlic Festival, past chair of the Chamber of Commerce, and was selected as Gilroy's Man of the Year in 2015. Greg worked for the Gilroy Police Department for 34 years, and the last 10 of which was, his, was Chief of Police. He was also featured as the Chief of October in the South County Police Chief's calendar of 2013. Greg is currently the Vice President of Ac excuse me, Academy Services at South Bay Regional Public Safety Training in San Jose. He has a Master's of Public Administration from San Jose State University. Greg and his wife, Chris, who is a Morgan Hill Rotarian, have three grown children and three grandchildren. Not the same, grown children and grandchildren. He joined <laughs> Rotary as a career move and then stayed for the fun. Greg's theme for his year as governor is make membership meaningful. And it's my pleasure to introduce Greg Giussiano. Thank you so much, Whitney. Can anybody guess what is not true about Greg from that bio? Something about a calendar. <laughs> yeah, calendar. I, I stopped short of saying centerfold because I thought that wasn't appropriate. But no, they did not have a police chief's calendar. I'll just have to add in something new every time. <laughs> yeah, they leave that for the firefighters. Yeah, okay. Yes, they do. That's, that's true. And, they, and, yeah. and Greg gave it away because he was kind of like, what? I figured. I don't know if Greg has a poker face or, or not. No, definitely does not. Okay. Take it away, DG. All right. So uh, thank you, Whitney, for, uh, for the introduction. Um, we, uh, we actually used, uh, just so you know, our club, we do fines, and we, we've used that process in our fines. You say two things that are true, and one that's false, and then if, uh, if the, they can guess, the fine goes down, and if you can't guess, then then the fine is up. So that's that's um, it's a it's a fun game, and it's a great way to get to know, know people in the club because you you get two facts about them. So thanks, Whitney. That's a that was a great program for you to start that. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. I love this club. I've I visited it a few times in the past, and uh, I know that you've been a great part of Area Six. So I've worked very closely with you, and I'm really happy I'm I'm able to be here and present. Uh, go ahead, Art. Next. <clears throat> okay. So this was a, you already know this, but I I'm shouting this out because I think this is a really historic event, and I shout every time I can. I want to I want to shout our our uh, our great news that uh, Jennifer Jones is going to be our district. Or I'm sorry, our Rotary International President in the year 22-23. Um, she's great. She's from Ontario, Canada the Windsor Roseland Club. And uh, she's been working for Roy her entire life, almost. And um, she's a wonderful person. I've met with her and I've worked with her and I've got training from her and she's just a great person to be around. She's a, a really, really special uh, person, dedicated to Rotary. And she's gonna be an excellent, excellent 
president and I'm glad that finally after 115 years or will be 117 by the time she becomes president we finally have a woman so I'm, I'm shouting that out next and I also want to shout this out um, um, Brian's talk about this but uh, Africa is now declared free no more po wild po polio virus in Africa Nigeria was the last country that had it and then they've been free for three years so the whole country whole continent is free. Uh, we have two countries left, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and a lot of that area is um, issues are about accessibility. Um, but we are going to get that. We're going to, um, we're going to overcome that. We're going to continue working. Uh, polio uh, vaccinations were stopped or uh, temporarily suspended uh, because of the coronavirus. They didn't want to bring coronavirus into back areas. And they also didn't want to bring any diseases out back out into the into the main areas, uh, but they were using the the system that we have in place for doing the coronavirus to help get medical assistance to areas that are under in the and or lack service of medical. So they've been using it, and the good news is is that the polio vaccinations have started up again. So they're back at doing doing that in um, in Afghanistan, Pakistan and several other countries around the world where they're, they're continuing to do polio vaccinations. So next. Uh-oh, what did I do? I lost it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> so I start my presentations out because I want everyone to know what the Rotary vision statement is. Um, this this uh, vision statement uh, is um, was developed through Rotary. Uh, it took a few years to come up with this, but it really is to try to tell people what Rotary is about. Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. These are very powerful words, 24 powerful words that tell why Rotary exists and what we do. And uh, I, I hope that encourage your clubs to, to take the vision state and put it on your website and, and let the world know what it is because it's really what Rotary is all about. It's about 1.2 million Rotarians around the world who come together to make the world a little better place, a better place today and a better place in the future. And it's, a, it's, very, it's very, um, very critical that the world knows why we're, we're in existence. Next. The areas of focus, um, I'm just going to uh, go through them very quickly. We promote peace, fight disease, provide water, uh, sanitation, and hygiene. We save mothers and children. We support education and we grow local economies. This is the, the areas of focus for all the international projects that we do. And I know that through Area 6 WCS, your club has uh, been involved in every one of those at one point or another. And uh, just uh, this year, we added a third, oh, no, I'm sorry, a seventh one, which is environment. The environment, uh, environmental issues are uh, critical in the world right now, and uh, uh, RI has decided that if you have if you have a project that you want to do internationally, uh, they will support it if it has to do with the environment, along with the other six areas of service. Um, went into effect this year, but it doesn't. We can't start doing grants in it until January, July of next year. But that I think is going to be uh, something that will bring more Rotarians into the, into our, and, and more people into, into Rotary because I think it's so important. <clears throat> so thank you for participating in all of the things that you've done internationally. Next. So I'm honored to be your governor. Um, I'm very proud of the work our district is doing. We are doing things locally. We are doing things around the world. Uh, it's an incredible journey that, that, that I took to become our governor. Um, since 2017, I have been receiving a lot of help and mentorship and support from all the past district governors and a whole lot of people in the district. Um, the entire lineup of our district governors, we meet very often. We discuss how to lead the, the district, where it should go. Uh, we have a strategic planning group that meets uh, every quarterly. Um, and we are trying to uh, make sure that we don't make big changes in our direction. We try to keep um, working together as a team. And so that as we go to, um, from changing from one governor to another, we're really having a smooth transition as opposed to a, a big change. And it's been working very well. We are uh, very proud of the work we do together. Next. 
So um, Chris and I have attended an awful lot of Rotary International Conventions. Uh, we missed the one in Hawaii, unfortunately. Uh, we've been to a lot of training sessions. There are, in our zones, uh, 26 and 27, there are uh, 30 districts. And so there are 30 district governors. We come together and get some training, uh, two years worth of training uh, to get us ready for our year. At each of the events I've, uh, I've attended, there's been uh, people that, are, that I've met from all over. Um, they're all incredible people. They're here, to, they're dedicated to what Rotary does and to serving others. And um, that was, uh, that, that's that been quite an experience for me. And the, the one, uh, the biggest thing that we do is a, a year's, uh, an event they call the International Assembly. What that does is it brings uh, all the governors from the world, over 500 districts are represented at that. Um, and we all meet together. We met in San Diego last January. And um, this year, um, for the first time, um, we've also invited Rotaract governors to attend. So there were Rotaract governors there. So um, we're trying to expand Rotaract into Rotary. And this is one of the first ways to do it. Next. So in case you don't know that, this is, uh, this is Holger Kanak. He's our RAC president for this year. Um, uh, he's one of the nicest people you never know. I, I got to meet him and work with him and talk to him at uh, several events that I've been at. Uh, he's great. He's a down to earth person. Um, he's fun to be around. He's got a great sense of humor. His goals are really pretty simple. He wants to grow Rotary and, and that's not just to make more members. That means to grow what we do and how we impact the world and what our, what our footprint uh, that we leave behind us is, uh, is bigger so that we can ensure that, um, that things are being done now and into the future. Um, he also wanted to increase the, uh, the presence of Ryla. Uh, he works with Ryla to, um, to be a, become a part of Rotary. As you know, you may or may not know, uh, the Ryla group is actually going to become Rotarians. They used to be a separate group of Ryla. Now they're going to become Rotarians in two years. And the biggest event being that uh, affects them is uh, they got to pay dues, so, <laughs> so that's, but, but the, they're doing a reduced dues, but they want Rila to expand. Um, he's also a big advocate of bringing youth into Rotary. Um, he was the chair of the youth exchange for all of Germany, um, well, all, uh, among other things that he's done in his career. So he's really a youth person and uh, bringing youth is important to him. Uh, next. So, uh, his, his uh, theme this year is uh, Rotary Opens Opportunities. Uh, so we're opening doors. Uh, I have to say that uh, over the last six or seven months, we've had a lot of opportunities in Rotary to try and do things. Uh, it's been a, a topsy turvy world. Things turned us around. The COVID has really stopped a lot of what we did. And we're trying to recover from that. And I, I'm uh, predicting that we are going to have a lot more things coming up that we have to deal with. Um, President, uh, Rebecca will tell you that um, uh, I've been professing flexibility in the clubs at every training since we began the meeting. Uh, and we must become more adaptable now and in the future if our clubs are to remain violent, vibrant, and healthy. Um, we have to be flexible. Uh, as I visited the clubs, I'm amazed at how quickly the members have adapted to the change they were brought on by the pandemic. Members are becoming experts in virtual meetings. They are attending online in order to stay active in the clubs. And they're coming up with innovative ideas to do community projects. And I, I hear, I heard uh, from your club uh, uh, um, board that you also have things in the future that you want to do. And that, um, so I, I applaud you for that. Next. Um, there's a lot of change going on in our world. There's social change, economic change, and of course, health. So the Rotary Clubs must be able to react to these changes if it's to um, remain strong and relevant. So, so take a look at your structure. Now's a good time to look at that while you're not meeting in person uh, to ensure that you have openness and membership and that your club fosters diversity, equity, inclusiveness, uh, inclusive, and an inclusive culture. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this has been a stated goal of Rotary for many years, and uh, they are expanding on this at this right now to to include things that are going on in the world, uh, because they know that Rotary must be a leader in all of these areas. So take a look. Next, the uh, next. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I didn't talk about this so much when I was meeting with uh, 
with the clubs because I talked a lot about flexibility in our training, but I'm adding another challenge to all the clubs, and that is being creative. We must make adjustments quickly. Um, we must adjust on the fly as becoming a norm for us. Things that we planned on doing get changed very quickly, um, and we must be creative in order to be and in order to be healthy. Fundraising has really been a problem for some of the clubs. I know that you have talked about that also, um, but it can be over club, overcome. There's some clubs that are out there doing virtual auctions. So they're taking, getting donations online and they're having an online auction and they're raising money that way. We have one club that did a mini golf tournament. Uh, and uh, there are other things out there that, that are being done by the clubs to raise, raise funds and take over for fundraisers that are not um, not being able to be presented because of the the, the, um, the restrictions in being in having events. So um, one of the things that was done is that at the zone level they brought a bunch of people together and they kind of brainstormed ideas on how to get uh, some fundraising done. And during the pandemic, and um, they created a list. There's four documents. There, I think they compiled it into one document. It's available on the uh, website. A district website so you can go there for ideas. Uh, we also sent it to the club presidents and the club president elects so it's out there for you to look at. Um, so take a look you know maybe none of these things will be things that your club could do maybe some of them are uh, but maybe it'll spark some ideas on how to do fundraising while we're in this virtual world. I will say use your imagination be creative and have some fun with these challenges. I know they seem like downers, but really they can be uppers. <laughs> we can do things that become very valuable to us and, uh, and become a lot of fun for the club. Next. Okay. So I suspect that whether we like it or not, Zoom meetings will become the norm for quite a while. Um, getting together in, in person is not something that's going to happen relatively quickly, especially in California. Um, so clubs are taking advantage of it. Some of them are doing fellowship as part of their meeting. Get a, instead of having the whole club together, although you're small, you can do a breakout of a few people and you can just talk about what's going on. Fellowship is very critical in Rotary. It's why a lot of people stay in, in the Rotary. And so we wanna look at ways to make fellowship happen. Um, have a virtual wine tasting. <laughs> that sounds like you've got one on the way. Uh, do a social hour. So instead of having it during the day, you can do it during the evening. Um, and that sounds also like we something you're already doing. Um, maybe you want to devote a meeting to just having the members catch up on what's been going on in their lives so that we can keep that personal connection with each other. It's really critical. And, uh, and we need to do that. Uh, some clubs are using the Zoom meetings to uh, get speakers from around the world. Okay. <laughs> People that we never would be able to have be a speaker at your club because of the cost and the travel involved. Online, they can do it. And, um, and so that's something that can be done um, for your club. Think about that as a way to get their club stimulated. Uh, I, um, there's one club in our district, they did a joint meeting with a club from Australia. They had a connection there. And so they did a, did a joint meeting. They, we exchanged information about each other and uh, learned about each other's cultures a little bit in our communities. It was a lot of fun. So virtual uh, um, meetings may not be ideal, um, but by being creative, clubs are using them to uh, make their meetings interesting and also to uh, get non returns to attend the club meetings, and then they become potential uh, members in your club. Next. Uh, pets, during pets and pre-pets, we talked an awful lot about um, what my theme is. Uh, I asked the presidents to work on finding ways to make the club, the, to support the club members. Uh, we must make sure that the member, make membership meaningful. That's what my theme was. Uh, to do this, clubs must be sure to engage the member in the club activities. Put, on, put them on committees. If you have new members, uh, assign them a mentor that can help teach them about the club and Rotary. But listen to their ideas because they're coming in with ideas and there's a reason that they joined your club, that they want to do something. So listen to that. Another way to make members meaningful is to do a project, you know, get them involved in projects. And more importantly, I say, do a new project. You know, I know that you're talking about trying to have a, a project that will be your standard, but every year you ought to think about something new to do. You know, if you do the same thing year in and year out, it becomes routine. So do something new. It energizes the club and it energizes your members. 
uh, be creative. Some of the projects that you've been doing in the past probably can't be done. Um, and so you have to be thinking out of the box to what can we do under the current under the current restrictions that we have. This is a great time to expand into something new. Um, I have to say, I, you know, I truly believe the clubs is what makes a great, Rotary the great organization it is. And it's the members, the members, all of you that make uh, the club successful. So we need to be flexible to be sure that the club reflects the needs of our members. The district members committee is also available to help you. Uh, they would happily come here and put on a program for you. Um, they can fit that presentation to meet your needs. Every club has different needs for membership and they can kind of make that membership meeting uh, or uh, presentation meet what you're looking for. Uh, another thing that I asked all the pre presidents to do is um, make sure that we can get our word out about all the good work we do. We must make sure that people know what Rotary does. Rotary does incredible work in our communities and around the world. And we don't talk about it enough. You know, we talk about it with each other in Rotary, but we don't talk about it to the public. Uh, the world needs to know what we're doing. Uh, I really believe that if we can really tell our story to everyone, everyone will want to be Rotarian because of all the good work that we're doing. So we need to get our story out. To help the clubs with that, um, the district has a public relations team. Uh, each area has a representative. Um, for area six, Carlos Pineda, my good friend from the uh, club, uh, uh, Gilroy Sunrise uh, Rotary Club, is your representative. Um, he's incredibly talented and can help you with public relations, social media, and a host of other things. And he also has a team that would support him if he doesn't know how to get, get the information you need, he can uh, find somebody who does on the team. Um, so get, talk about getting the word out about what we do. Uh, your club is a great supporter of the foundation in the past. And, uh, have, and um, I wanna make sure that you continue doing that support. Uh, you must not let the support for the foundation lessen uh, because of all the good work that the Rotary Foundation does. Now more than ever, I think the world needs Rotary. So pledge a donate now to support the foundation and to support Polio Plus. Next. Okay. So, I'm not here to tell you what to do. Uh, the, Rotary, uh, found, the Rotary District is here to help support what your club is doing. Okay, to that end, we have a lot of, a lot of um, events that are coming up to help train, inform, and prevent or, or promote fellowship. At the district, uh, we have planned uh, for several events to be live until we know that uh, they can't be. So uh, right now, uh, we've made the decision that probably into December, we will continue doing district events uh, virtually. But after that, we want to go live. So some things that are coming up, we talked about the TRF, Orrin Mahoney, who is my uh, past, past sister governor and my chair. Uh, we'll be doing a workshop on September 17th. Some of that will be geared as a big workshop, and then they'll do breakouts by area. Uh, the COVID task force, uh, we had planned to do that in August 31st, uh, but a few members of the members of that uh, task force um, are um, been displaced because of the fires. So we were resetting it. We think the 21st of September will be when we do that. The book club, we talked about that. Um, if you need more information, we can talk about that after I'm done. Um, we're doing our avenues of service in October. Um, we're trying to set this up. We have a keynote speaker, and then we also are going to have they are, the clubs be able to sh uh, show off what they've been doing. And then the members of the Rotary can come and look at all the different projects that are being done in the district. Uh, it's going to be, we're trying to recreate as much as we can what it would have been like if we did it in person. So to be able to go in, take a few minutes, look at what the project is they're doing, and then move out and go to another one. Or if you're interested or very interested, you can spend more time there and learn what they have to say. So, um, yeah, that's a, it's, <laughs> it's a very big project we're working on, and um, we think it's going to be successful, at least we hope to. Um, November, the Zone Institute, uh, we haven't, we don't call it that, we call it the Training Institute, but it's the old Zone Institute. In the past, you had to go there to be there, and it cost about five or six hundred dollars for tuition. Now they're doing it for fifty dollars because it's virtual, so it's a great time for all of your members to go get training there. Um, and then John Lip will be here December 5th. We'll get more information out about that. Next. Oh, 
uh, before you go to the next, um, I forgot. Oh, yeah, next. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, in February, uh, we're getting pre pets. Richard hasn't got a date yet, but he's working on that. He wants to do that in person. Um, April, uh, we're doing the training assembly. Um, this year, we did it virtually. He wants to do that live uh, next year. And that, 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 that we hope that we'll be able to do be done. Um, our district conference, we are we had to cancel last year, so we are hoping to have the district conference this year. For you, it'll be a short drive over to Gilroy Gardens. That's where we're going to have it, May 15th, so put that in your calendars. Uh, it's a, we're planning on a one-day event right now. We hope to have some fun, and we hope to be able to let people ride a few rides and do some other things while we're doing it. Um, we're working on that. And the RI convention in, in Taipei is scheduled for June 12th to 16th. Um, we have, uh, the district has booked, um, booked rooms at a five-star hotel um, at about 200 bucks a night, which is pretty good rate. So if you're interested in going to Taipei, uh, we recommend you go to the district website. It'll click you to how you can uh, sign up for, for the rooms. Uh, the reason that we're pushing it now is because we have to give them, by the middle of October, we have to give them a, uh, a final count on how many rooms we're going to get. So if you want to, please sign up for it now. The district website has all kinds of information. So I want to talk about Malcolm. Uh, somebody asked me earlier, you know, why, why I became governor, why did I put my hat, my, my hat in the ring, you know, to become district governor and Malcolm is the reason. So I'm going to tell you about why, why, what it is that really made me stay in Rotary. Uh, so Malcolm was a Rotarian. He had leukemia and he needed a bone marrow transplant. <clears throat> but the doctors were having trouble finding him a donor match. One of our members thought there must be something more the club could do. So we asked the community for help. Let's get everyone we know and everyone they know tested. Well, he was, even though we tried hard, we never did find a match for Malcolm. But fortunately, one was found. And now, over 20 years later, he's still an active member of our club. But that, that's really not the end of the story. It's really just the beginning. Since then, doing a donor drive has become an annual event in Kauai. The Red Cross says that it's one of, our, one of the most successful drives in the country. Because of our efforts, thousands of names have been added to the donor list. And a lot of people around the world who needed a miracle have been able to find a donor. Think about all the lives that have been changed since we started. And one of those lives was mine. I happen to be the first person from this community project to become a donor. Imagine being able to give someone a new life. It has really inspired me to give back. It was a very incredible experience for me and it changed me forever. If it weren't for Rotary, this wouldn't have happened. Rody does an incredible job and incredible work around the world. And wherever Rotary exists, lives get better. We just wanted to help a fellow Rotarian. We ended up making lasting change across the globe, in our community, and in ourselves. That's what people have actually do. But that's what Rotary does. Thank you. Opening up for questions. Thank you for listening. Well, now you got us all like, like <laughs> can you give us a second to gather ourselves? <laughs> I yeah, think you should lead off, lead off with that and give us some time to recoup. That's a, phenom that's a phenomenal story, Greg. That's a really Thank good you. one to share. I'm glad you saved it for this meeting. <laughs> Um, you know, because he was asked in the initial meeting, so. And, uh, and also, too, I mean, even leading with that story, because, you know, none of the tactics and none of the strategies matter until I know where your heart is. And you just showed us where your heart is. <laughs> good motivation. I it's a good testimony. I appreciate the feedback. Maybe I will start with it instead of end with it. It's yeah. like you open the hearts, like, you know what I mean? Like, and then you put the brains with the heart kind of stuff. 
Yeah. Either way is really good. Thank you for sharing. Is there any um, questions from the the group here? Doesn't have to be about anybody? my presentation. Anyway. He's Greg. Oh, no, he's there. So, Greg, I know I get to talk to you all the time, but can I ask you a question? Has your wife, Chris, ever been president of her club? No, she's oh, not. Okay. Does she aspire to ever, or is she worried she'll get sucked in by you? No, she um, she's a she's a good supporter of Rotary, and she does a lot of work for the club, and, and she's on a lot of committees. But she does not want to be, be in leadership. Gotcha. So, can I can I say something about your wife, Greg? <laughs> so sure. I I joined the Cupertino Club about fifteen years ago, and you know it's a hundred something people, and you walk into a really big club, and I knew four people, and this woman named Chris was a member, and in Chris, I, now that I know her in Chris friendly hog fashion, he came to me and said, oh, work with me, sit with me. So I'm a happy Rotarian because 15 years ago, not even knowing Greg or what I'd be doing, um, Chris was a member of my club with open arms uh, and warmth and friendliness, uh, you know, got me into Rotary. So I have a, I have a happy story about Chris. Uh, she's she's seen now with Morgan Hill Club, Rotary Club, and she still does the same thing. <laughs> she's on their foundation stuff, and she's on there. She worked on their fellowship a lot. So she's huh. she's, she's what makes me. She does all the she does all the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like to say that uh, I met Chris and Greg in a couple of, of conventions, and also you know Gilroy. But Chris is really great, very very nice, and really help my wife enjoy our conventions that we went to. So yep. Yep. I guess we'll rather talk about Chris than you. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Yeah. That's is, is this like the the good cop, bad cop? Like <laughs> is that what this is? Is this that's your is that what I'm hearing here? Let her know that she's the star of some of our meetings, just so that's, you know. I will. Yeah. She knows well, that thank you guys. Yeah. You guys are welcome to join us anytime. We meet on Thursdays at noon, except the third Thursday, we have now transitioned to do, like you were talking, Greg, more fellowship with a little bit of challenge, because who doesn't like a little competition? Um, and some fun added into it. And I think, well, yeah, Brian like went all out, but when you're retired and you got time, I'm like, Greg, who came home and just threw it, it was on the grill as he's presenting. <laughs> I put limes on top of his chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and came in second place. <laughs> you did. The, 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 the meal challenge sounds great. I mean, it's it great. Does oh, sound. yeah. It was fun. Yeah, we're putting a cookbook together of all the recipes, too, with pictures and stuff so they can be shared. And, you know, just like you said, creative and having some fun in the, in the, in the process, rather. Excuse me. I made a video of mine. <laughs> Retired. Again, retired. <laughs> So I have one more question of Greg. Sure. Um, Greg, what does Rotary International see as the big challenges it faces? Um, I, I'm thinking of one, and that's that membership in America has been down while membership in the rest of the world has, you know, been up. And for us as Americans to lose our, lose our leadership in, in Rotary is would trouble me. Um, you know, and obviously there have got to be others like, you know, how do we continue this organization at a time when we can't meet? Um, is there some kind of a, a list that you're aware of that are the, the critical things that Rotary is thinking of in these times? Um, so let me, let me go back to the membership first. Uh, Rotary, Rotary recognizes there's a membership problem. Uh, it's not that there's uh, that, like we're shrinking, but we've been been at 1.2 million Rotarians around the world for a long time, like 20 mm -hmm. years worth of it. Yeah. Uh, so we've been very flat. And you're right; the it's a bit of a big shift, and it hadn't been for uh, some of the some of the areas in, in Asia where we had huge uh, growth. Um, we probably would be you know, uh, uh, an organization that was uh, was de declining. So they know that that's an issue. And so they, they put together a group, they did study uh, all of the issues about, all the stuff about flexibility really comes from the study they did. That we need to make our clubs reflect the people that are in the world today. Right. And, and the, you know, the, the, gen, the generation that we have now, they're online people, 
they don't want to spend time doing lunch. They don't have time for that. Uh, they work from the desk. They work through their lunches. The you know um, those those sorts of things. So so that's why they said, well, make make it flexible. So have different ways of having membership. Have have memberships for families instead of so the in, but make it reasonable so that, you know, they're not all having to pay everything. Um, and look at whether whether having your due structure the way it is is a good thing or a bad thing. Is it helping you bring members in, or is it tearing them away, or, or distracting them, or dissuading them from becoming members? So they did a lot of work on that. That's where the that's where the vision statement came from. That's where the new rodeo logo came from. It's, we had the rotary uh, wheel, uh, but nobody knew what the rotary wheel was. So they they spent a million dollars to figure out, oh, we'll put rotary next to the wheel. <laughs> but but it but it's true that people don't know. <laughs> Now, now people do know what rotary is it says so so um so a lot of that is happening so that that I'll, uh, and there's a lot of other things that they've done they've done things to make it more reasonable to become uh, on the second part the current thing is yeah they are worried about membership um they're also all worried about the foundation uh, the foundation giving was up but they also did an awful lot of extra uh giving last year they they had the coronavirus um, uh, grants that were that was spread out throughout the world. They put a lot of money that from from Rotary Foundation into that, and so the foundation took a little bit of a hit. And you're trying to build the foundation up big enough so that eventually they'll be able to fund all of the projects we do um, off the foundation rather than rely on 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 donations every year. So uh -huh. they have been trying to build it, but this year it went down because of that. And some of the big donors that uh, that um, they've had in the past. Uh, redirected some of that money. So those things are happening. Um, and so they worry about that. And they haven't been able to fly anywhere. They haven't been around, you know, our poor Holger, you know, he's been the president already for two months. He hasn't been able to visit a club. He hasn't been able to leave Chicago, really, yeah. uh, because Rotary's not traveling. And they won't be traveling at least until the first of the year. Right. So, so it's, it's hard to get the message out. It's hard to be I mean, I feel hard. I feel horrible that I'm not able to, to meet with the clubs here. So I know it. And I'm just worried about my 61 clubs. He's worried about yeah. 14,000 clubs. So, uh, so, so I'm worried about that. So quick story of an improvement, and I won't give any names in this, but mm -hmm. when I was the GSE team leader to Japan, um, and of course we went to all the different, and at every club I said, yeah, and I'm the president of my club and I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, without any names, um, mm -hmm. I got back from our district. Joan, don't say that. Mm -hmm. Don't don't say that. Um, and I wrote back and I said, wait a minute. The president of RI is saying that women need to be included in Rotary. Why shouldn't I be saying that as a missionary from a district where half of my club is women? You know, and we are seeing good things come about from this. And the answer I got back was don't try to change their culture. Yeah. So my, my sharing is to just say, I'm really glad to, to see the diversity and to, the inclusion because we need everybody's creative input because we have a broken world that is in a heap of trouble and everybody needs to jump in with solutions. So I, I honor you for, showcasing the fact that she's a new president and you know i don't want all women but at the same time i'm pleased to see that i could be in that situation again and say you know having women's a good thing well jo joan if i might add in i think uh, you're not trying to change people so much as you're just trying to share and model and i think that was a great thing that you did and obviously rotary list is listening because they've made a huge effort to increase women in Rotary, so. Uh-huh, but all. I was, yeah, it was just so funny that the president was saying it and our own district was was having these binds um, against it. And yet, you know, I, I've had the, the unfortunate part of my life in being a visionary <laughs> because sometimes people don't see what you see, but you know, it's a pleasure to see it catch up. Good. And so I think, I think on one level, they're having these problems, but on the other level, they're making some really significant changes. Hey, yeah. if Daryl Davis can convince a KKK member, 
to drop ties because not the right thing, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Look up Daryl Davis. Yeah. If you do, anyways. I just think that change is possible. If you expose, exposure is good and, you know, education is good and empowering people to make good choices is good, <laughs> so. And I think, Greg, that um, Rotary International has enormous challenges right now. And my prayers are that we will continue to thrive this organization um, because good needs to be fighting against bad and Rotary is, is an institution of good. So thank you, John. Yes, thank you. All of our yeah. efforts are needed. To continue that um, good spirit, last night after the district meeting, I pulled out my our roster. So um, if uh, Rotor, uh, Almond and Rotary members on this call, please take your uh, can't your uh, call off mute because I need a verbal commitment from you. Um, because I'm looking at my own screen, I'm not looking at the camera. So what we're gonna do is start a kind of some wellness checks on folks who are not attending the meeting. And what I did was take the people that are currently in this meeting right now and I assigned you each all one person to make a phone call to, not an email, a phone call to, and just kind of check in on them and see how they're doing. It's, it's like a wellness check basically. Maybe if they need anything and just have a, you know, a, an authentic and genuine conversation, let them know we miss them, remind them that we, you know, well, how can we make it easier for them to attend and maybe share with them the dates that we have coming up that they can participate in as well, okay? So I'm hoping your um, your microphones are off mute. So Bill Bynum. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna be calling Gary. Gary? Gary Expergram. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, you're going to be calling Fred Eberly. Okay. Okay, Burke. You're going to be calling Ken. Okay, we'll give him a minute. We'll come back to him. I think he was on mute. Greg Constantino. Yes. You're going to call Chris, but I want an update on that because he's non-responsive. Well, ever you're since lucky. you out drank him at that party. I don't know. What, why are you saying that out loud? <laughs> he opened up his tab that's not my fault so um okay uh joan you're gonna call dave olson okay tanner you're gonna call miles okay okay and then i'll call john baker and paul yanaka so do we have do we have a roster of phones does, does everyone have a phone yeah. Yeah, I, I, I did send it out a, lot, a few weeks ago when I updated my um, database, but okay. I'm happy to I'm happy to send it out again to everybody. So Rebecca, what would you think about this? Um, I was very close when I was a GSE team leader in Japan to the club there, or a particular club there. We might do as Greg was suggesting and host a joint meeting with them. Yeah, I have that as my list, but right now this is what we're going to do right this moment as check-ins. But I do have that on my list to um, talk about for next week. Perfect. And how we can look into it. Burke, did you get who you're calling? I'm calling to Ken. I thought he was on the call today. No. Yeah. Call yeah. him and check on Yeah, he him. was on. He was on the, he was on the he was first. On. He, was, he was not. He was not he, on. <laughs> he was watching the Padres game. <laughs> okay. But this, like, take it seriously, like be authentic and let them know that we care about them, we miss them, and um, we're just checking in. They're basically called wellness checks, okay? So we're a little bit over time. I apologize because I'm, a, you know, I want to be respectful of everybody's time, but I want to um, thank Judy, uh, Greg, Whitney, and Art as well for joining us. You guys are great company. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you to everybody else who could attend, and you know, have a good day. Stay safe and. Make somebody smile today. All right. Okay. Take care. You guys feel welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, of course. Right. Bye, guys. Uh, Rebe Rebecca, I want to yeah. thank you for the tip I got. The best tip of the day for me is the hug with the neck. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm. I, I have like that. Just I'm, simple. Hey, next, we're all looking good. <laughs> next family photo, I'm going to think of you. Yeah, just find somebody to reach up behind and grab it back. Thank you, mom. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. And Joan, Joan will be in touch.
Okay, thanks, Judy. Right. Nice to meet you.